Hey guys, Shutters and Triggers here. Um, as you can see, we're in my basement at my reloading bench, and I am about to start filming my reloading handgun ammunition um, tutorial and walkthrough. Before we get started, I just want to um, talk for a second about this, and um, then I'll dive into it and show you guys what I know. Um, first things first, I really want to express to you guys that while reloading can be a very fulfilling and interesting hobby and you know in, in addition to our hobby of, of firearms it is inherently dangerous um, keep in mind that we are dealing with highly flammable highly explosive materials black powder primers um, these need to be handled with a degree of caution um, primers by definition are a small high explosive they have a tiny piece of metal in there that when the primer goes off it can shoot that out at you um, black powder is extremely flammable extremely explosive um, I'm not saying this to frighten you guys, I don't think that I am, but it's just something to keep in mind and to be aware of going into this. Um, you know, I, reloading, it. the reason to get into reloading, your, your mileage may vary. Um, I do it because I want to shoot more often, and um, I do it because I find it really interesting. Um, as you guys know, I'm a photographer, and I process my own film, I do color, I do black and white, I do slide, and all of these are very detail-oriented processes. So reloading um, really kind of jives with that, and um, I'm able to make these measurements and make these calculations and, and monitor my, my levels and everything really well, and I, I really thrive off of that. If you find that you're not so much of a detail-oriented person and um, it, you just, you know, the small the small things kind of bother you and, and you just would rather not have to deal with that, maybe reloading is not the best choice for you. The last thing I want is for someone to watch one of my videos and um, spend a couple hundred dollars on this reloading gear and, and you know, load up some ammunition and, and head out to the range and, and, and hurt themselves or damage their, their, their firearms. So... Um, just to, you know, once again, reloading I think can be a lot of fun. It allows us to get out and use um, use our weapons more, and and um, it allows us to potentially, if there is ever a uh, lapse in our supply of ammunition for whatever reason, political, economic, whatever, it'll allow us to um, work for our, you know, to make our own. I don't cast bullets yet. I want to to get into that. But um, for the time being, I'm, I'm buying them. Um, in this video, I'm going to be using for the first time, so it'll be kind of interesting for you guys to watch, um, lead bullets um, instead of full metal jacket or jacketed hollow point. Um, you'll see in this video that I'm not really editing anything out. Um, I Once you get all your dies set, you can leave them, and they should give you pretty consistent results. You just want to double check everything. I am taking my dies out of my set and resetting them to kind of demo that for you. And um, you will see that I have some problems, and I, I cut the video a couple of times just to to, to set the next thing up, or, or I, I do a little Google search, you know, to at one point to figure something out. But I just want to let you know that I'm not editing anything out. I'm not a pro, I'm not a master at this. I'm not a pro. I'm not a professional. So um, I really urge you guys to uh, get reloading manuals, read those, um, get on some forums, get some advice. Uh, most of your state should have a, like, a, um, here it's the Tennessee Gun Owners Forum, or TGO, and it's an extremely good reference for all of this stuff. And, um, yeah, it can be a lot of fun, and it can be really cost-effective. Um, it can cut your costs more than in half. So, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this, and um, I'm looking forward to any comments or questions that you have. Feel free to comment or PM me. I'll answer everything to the best that I can, or I can help you do the research to find out what you're, what you're uh, wondering. So, with further ado... Here's my reloading tutorial. Hey guys, Shutters and Triggers here. Um, this is a video I have been wanting to do for a really long time. Um, a few months ago, I bought all the stuff that you need to start reloading your own ammo, um, simply to reduce the cost of shooting and to allow me to go shooting more often. And um, in the very obscure reason of being able to produce my own ammo should something happen to our supply. Um, I know some people, some people are really worried about that, but I honestly don't really see that coming. Um, but, you know, hey, that's beside the point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through step-by-step -step reloading 9mm um, rounds. And... Um, these steps will translate into loading 
pretty much any pistol round there are. Um, I also load 45 ACP, or rather I should say I'm beginning to load 45 ACP. But um, this will be 9mm. I am waiting on getting the dies for 45. But uh, yeah. So before I get started, I'm going to walk you through all the tools that you need in order to successfully reload your ammo. And then after that, I'm going to cut and I'm going to get set up and I will show you the different steps. This might turn into a multi-parter video, and um, if that happens, so be it. So, okay, first off, to reload, you need some brass. These are 9mm brass, car um, brass casings. Um, this is range brass. I picked this up off at the range, and um, as you can see, let me switch my focus here, click, it still has the old primer in it, but we will take care of that in a second. So that's the first thing that you need is some old brass to work with. You can buy brass. Sometimes you can buy brass, new brass that's already primed, um, but the only thing that's going to do is increase your costs. So um, if you're like me and you're just trying to be able to go to the range as often as you can um, and not have to go to Walmart and pay $25 for what is like what equates to about an hour's worth of shooting, this is the way to go. So the second thing that you are going to need are a set of dies. These are Lee Precision dies. This is the deluxe set. And what the deluxe set means is that it also has a factory crimp die, which aids in the feeding of the cartridges that you're making. But in here you have the crimp die, the powder through expanding die, the carbide sizing die, and the bullet seat die. So um, I will walk you through all the steps of setting these up correctly. Um, along with your dies, you will also need, I'm going to move the camera here, a reloading press. This is the Lee turret press. Um, many of you have seen my unboxing video of this. And um, I have a little bit of experience using it now, and it's a great press, honestly, for the money. I mean, I think you can pick up this kit for less than $100. And um, it comes with that and a set of dies, plus your consumables is all you need to be reloading. So um, it comes with a scale and everything. I have bought a different scale, but it comes with a scale that will work for you. So let's see. Brass, uh, dies, press you need a scale to measure your powder charges um, you need a priming tool to prime your brass um, this your press will come with a priming tool but it primes one at a time and you have to handle your primers which is less desirable there's a chance that the oils in your skin can ruin your primers um, and that will cause a misfire so let's see powder um, this is a pound of powder. Out of one pound of powder, you should be able to get thousands of rounds. Um, small pistol primers or large pistol primers, 9mm, 380 ACP, and those those kind take small pistol primers. Um, 45 ACP takes large pistol primers, like so. Um, and then... Um, I'm not sure about magnums and stuff like that. I know there are different kinds of primers out there. Um, this is one of your most expensive components. Primers and bullets will be what you spend the most money on. Um, a next, the next helpful tool for you to have is a caliper, so you can measure your overall length um, after you've completed your round, and that is how you will determine whether or not your rounds will chamber. There is a easier way of doing that that I will also show you. Um, oh. You need some bullets. These are lead cast. Um, you can also buy FMJs. You can buy hollow points. I have up here. Let me get them really quick. I used to reload 380. I don't anymore because I don't have anything in 380, but I still pick up the brass in case I should get some. But um, you can buy some really premium bullets for, for reloading. Let me focus, focus, focus. That is a Hornady tap round. And I have reloaded with these and fired them. They worked really great. Um, and where I bought them, they were quite cheap, but depending on what, you know, the nicer the bullet, for the most part, the more money you're going to spend. And we're all about saving money. So, let's see. Uh, see if I've forgotten anything. If I forget anything, you'll see me using it, and I will, I will talk you through it, so that will help you out. Um, primer pocket cleaning tool. 
This is not a necessity. I probably clean my primer pockets every third reload, and um, I haven't had any problems with it so far. I'm not enormously experienced with reloading, but as it stands, I haven't had any issues. Um, and then along with your press comes the um, the Lee powder. I can't even remember what this is called. Um, I used to have the box for it. This is where you, this is how you determine your powder charge. This sits on top of your press, and and the press will distribute powder through this um, using these auto discs, which determine your charge. And then let's see. The last and probably one of the most important parts for reloading is your reloading manual. I would recommend that you, before you begin to reload, buy the reloading manual and read through all of the information in it. Um, just so that you have an understanding of what you're doing and the concepts behind reloading before you get started. Um, hey guys, one step I forgot to include when I first got started, so I'm just gonna, I'm doing it now after I have started, and um, I'm gonna insert this at the beginning of the video. But um, I tumble my, my brass clean, and um, I use this. This is a, uh, who makes this? This is a Lyman Turbo Pro 1200 tumbler, and. Um, Basically, what this does is it polishes and cleans your brass from all of the powder residue and dirt and whatever else that was on it. And um, part of it's a cosmetic thing. It just makes your brass look a little bit nicer and it looks like you have new ammo. And the other thing that I've heard is that um, if you have dirt or something like that in your on your brass and stuff and you run it through your carbide dye, um, you can scratch it. And so then if you scratch the carbide, it will scratch... Um, every other round that you run through it, um, which can wear on your gun, and it's just a bad thing. So for a relatively small investment, you can get a tumbler, and um, you tumble your brass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of show you how I do that. Um, you just, you take your range, your range brass, and you dump it in here. And you look out for stuff like that where there's a rock jammed in it. This is the hazard. You need to be careful and inspect your brass. That's the hazard of using range brass. Got a little bit more. So something that I'm really excited about is uh, these casings, 45 auto. I'll be reloading those soon. So you can see, you can tumble quite a bit. And um, what's happening is my wife and I are going out to dinner. I'm kind of in the middle of the reloading video, so I'm gonna let this work while we're gone. And um, it'll just prep this. But, uh, yeah, this is what you would do before, you know, like the night before you're going to reload or something. You would just tumble this overnight or for a few hours or whatever. But you use um, a, a, a polishing media that you get at your reloading shop. It's usually some sort of, like, corn cob media or, you know, there's all kinds of different kinds. Some people add, a, like, a spoonful of car wax or something like that to it. But it looks like that. And um, you just kind of pour it in there with your, with all of your range brass, sort of all over. Try not to make an enormous mess. Let it even out there. Take your cover, put that on. Take your little nut, screw this down. Make sure this is good and tight because this will be shaking. You don't want this to come loose. That would be a huge mess. And you want to you want to make sure this is somewhere where it's not going to move. And then you simply plug it in. And uh, I'm just going to be loud when I do this. So I'm just going to talk to you about it now. Um, plug it in and leave it overnight if you can, or you know for a few hours. You want it to tumble for a couple hours, and it will clean it out, and it will be shiny, and it'll look new. Um, and it's just you know. It's just, it's the first step. It's what you do. So here we go. Let me take the camera off the tripod and I'll show you what it's doing. So it's just cleaning the brass, um, rubbing up against the media and stuff like that. There we go. All right, so that's your first step. I will insert that at the beginning of the video. Thanks, guys.